Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring, and what I guess will be my final overview of the magnificent Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. I have been holding off doing this video for as long as possible because I was hoping that we might get a Christmas 2020 annual from Games Workshop, but with Christmas at this point being what, nine days away? I think we can safely assume that boat has sailed. We can safely assume that Games Workshop will not be releasing a 2020 annual for us. And therefore, the final Ascension expansion and then um, one narrative campaign that was in a White Dwarf magazine the other month is the final conclusion of the game. With that being the case, I thought I would do a complete overview of the entire series from beginning to end. This is going to cover some old ground because obviously I have been quite comprehensive in my coverage of Blackstone Fortress on my channel. So I'm going to try and do it as quickly as possible. But um, there will be spoilers. I'm going to spoil all of the secret envelopes. I'm going to spoil bits of the storyline. And we're just going to quickly whiz through it all. Uh, if I do overlook something, because I am largely going from memory here, I don't have uh, a lot of notes to work from. If I do miss anything, I'll put it in the video description if it gets pointed out to me or if I remember it while I'm editing. So do check down in the video description as well. Of course, the first thing I think I should do is mention the current status of this game. Obviously, Games Workshop are winding it down but some products are still available. The base game recently came back into stock on the Games Workshop web store, so you can still get the base game. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, the base game on its own is a fun experience. If you're not too worried about expanding uh, those contents from that base game, then it is a lot of fun. But if you're someone who likes to get expansions for games, this is where the problem arises. Currently in the UK, all of the expansions are sold out. The only ones that are still showing on the Games Workshop web store are Escalation and Ascension, which are the two big ones. And both of those are showing as temporarily unavailable. And it has been the case before on the Games Workshop store that things that are temporarily unavailable do suddenly become unavailable full stop. Having said that, the actual base game was showing as temporarily unavailable for quite some time and then did come back into stock. So fingers crossed, those expansions will return at some point. However, all of the other expansions, all of the little card packs, they are gone and we won't be seeing those again. You can still pick up the 2019 annual that has never sold out and that could well be part of the reason why we uh, don't appear to be getting a 2020 annual. I don't think they want to produce a book that they're going to be sat on for any length of time. In America, it's a very similar situation. Uh, the base game is in stock. All of the other expansions are out of stock, uh, except for Ascension, which is the final expansion that is still showing as in stock. And that's possibly because Games Workshop was selling it for $110. Escalation is still showing on the website, but is showing as temporarily unavailable. So who knows what will happen with that? I haven't been through all the other territories on the Games Workshop web store. So if you are in other territories outside of the UK or the US, uh, it's worth going and checking. But also bear in mind that uh, high street stores, your little bricks and mortar stores, little friendly game stores may still have some of these things in stock if you can hunt it down. Other than that, you are resigned to places like eBay and the horrific markups from third party sellers. I suppose I should also point out as well that I've never done a review, a, a proper review of Blackstone Fortress on my channel. And to be honest, I don't think I ever will. I have covered Blackstone Fortress to such a degree. I have drilled into every single expansion. I have done so much content on it. I think and there's nothing left for me to say and nothing that would make it an interesting review. I love the game. It does have its faults. I think the biggest fault for me is it's a real pain setting up the combat map tiles. They didn't number the tiles or give them letters or any anything that makes it easy to set up those maps and it can become quite a chore setting those up. The game also has a potential to become a little bit easy once you start tooling up your characters with some really good equipment. So I do use a few house rules and things like that, which I have covered in other videos, to tweak the challenge of the game. But overall, I think it is a huge amount of fun. 
and I have immensely enjoyed it, which is why I have purchased every single product that Games Workshop have released for the game, even the ones that aren't that great. Which leads me neatly to my overview. Here we have the core game, the Blackstone Fortress core game. And as I mentioned, it's a fun experience out of the box. The main premise, of course, is that uh, this Blackstone Fortress has been found floating in space. Um, a bunch of adventurers have gone to explore it. They have set up this way station called Precipice, which orbits around the Blackstone Fortress, and that serves as your base of operations. Various different adventurers will take off from Precipice, go into the Blackstone Fortress, explore, try to find things, uh, take them back to Precipice, trade them, that sort of stuff. Meanwhile, a Chaos Lord called Obsidious Malax has basically had his ship absorbed into the Blackstone Fortress, so he's trapped inside there with his cohort of Chaos followers, and they're exploring the Blackstone Fortress, trying to reveal its secrets, and the Blackstone Fortress is kind of speaking to Obsidious Malax and seems to be uh, trying to manipulate him, so he will be a big bad guy that is roaming around the fortress, trying to get in the way of you doing what you want to do. And gradually, as the series progresses, your storylines, the storylines of the heroes and the storylines of Obsidious Malax, will intertwine, they will collide, and then they will weave together um, in a really satisfying narrative story. What's one of the things I've really enjoyed about it, I have enjoyed the whole story that the game has created. And that story does mainly come through from the core set, and then the first big expansion, which was Escalation, and then the second big expansion, which was Ascension. All of the other expansions and things flesh out the world, but without really pushing that narrative forwards. So you get one big campaign in this core box, and at the end of it, you are supposed to open a secret envelope. And this was something that is... Uh, carried on through the whole game. Every single expansion has its own secret envelope with its own little prize that you get when you win the story. And just to reiterate, we're spoiler territory now. I'm showing spoiler cards. If you don't want anything spoiled, if you're still playing through the game yourself, don't watch any more of this video. I'm not going to individually point out spoilers from now on. Just assume that everything I'm saying is potentially a spoiler. In my copy, I got the Augmetic of Dominance, and there are a whole bunch of these Augmetics. You might not get the same one, but throughout the uh, narrative, throughout the game, as you play through the different expansions, you will see more of these Augmetics turning up, and they do have a purpose in the final showdown, um, in the final uh, culmination of the story in Ascension. And this little uh, image here, that uh, sure does look like a big old beastie that we didn't know about at the time. The first expansion that Games Workshop released, and it was a few months after the core set, and I remember at the time, just before it was released, there was quite a lot of noise from people saying, is Blackstone Fortress already done? Is this the end of it? Why aren't Games Workshop supporting it? Where are the expansions? And at that point, there were some people thinking that we weren't going to see a lot of expansions at all. But then this came along, this was the first of, as it turned out, quite a few expansions. And it was interesting because it was the return of the Amble, it was the return of a classic creature and a really nice miniature. And the miniature itself was a big draw for this expansion. The mission itself was not the most exciting. It basically used the same game structure as the core game in that you would go into Blackstone Fortress and then you had to find uh, Amble Spores that would eventually enable you to have a final battle against the dreaded Amble itself. And in fact, with a group of friends, I actually completed this entire dreaded Amble campaign in a single day. It took all day and a lot of beer, but we did the whole campaign in one day. So it wasn't the biggest campaign, but it was a lot of fun. And as I said, the dreaded Amble is a very cool miniature. It was a shame that they didn't really introduce any new mechanisms to the game, but it was one of those expansions that was really just giving you more quantity rather than shaking things up in a really dramatic way. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this expansion is the little bit of story behind it in that on Precipice, a new biocontainment facility is being built. It's called Set 7, and it is the people of Set 7 that have asked you to go into the Blackstone Fortress to find 
the dreaded amble and to collect some of its eggs. And when you complete the scenario, you get to open a secret envelope and the secret envelope actually changes Precipice and changes your game for the rest of your playthroughs. Any future expansions you play through, there is a permanent change to your game. And that is because the secret envelope contained these cards and these cards basically you get one that tells you that from now on uh, set seven is a permanent part of precipice and you can go there in order to use the facilities and then you have three cards which are cool new items that are derived from amble bits and pieces biological elements of the amble used to create these items so that's a really interesting thing and for me the most interesting part of this expansion really the fact it helped to shape future games and it helped to shape what was happening on precipice and it gave that sense that things were changing and things were evolving on the ship that sort of thing is interesting to me and it is something that we had seen in shadows over hammerhall if you watched my review of shadows over hammerhall on the channel recently I did mention in that review that sometimes there are things that can happen inside the dungeon that will affect the city of Hammerhall. So when you return to the city between your adventures, things have changed up top. That sort of thing is very interesting to me. The other really good thing about the Dreaded Amble as an expansion is it gives you the contents necessary to play the best thing that Games Workshop ever made for Blackstone Fortress, which was an adventure they first published in White Dwarf, a series of linked narrative combats and challenges where you have to hunt down a dreaded amble and then use it to break into a specific part of the Blackstone Fortress which is completely sealed off. That adventure was ultimately republished in the 2019 annual and I would say that if you have the dreaded amble expansion it is well worth picking up the 2019 annual just so that you can play through that extra mission because it is well worth it. The next expansion was Traitor Command, which is one of the weakest expansions that was released, mainly because it doesn't do a whole lot of anything much. It has a single campaign in it, a small campaign, which is pretty much the same as the Dreaded Amble one, except rather than collecting amble spores, you are instead collecting data slates to find out information about this treacherous group of Chaos followers. Again, you get some interesting new miniatures. You get a Chaos Ogrim, which is very nice. And you also get the Chaos Commissar. And I know that a lot of people were very excited about those at the time for adding to their 40k armies. So, of course, really nice miniatures. But the adventure itself wasn't really doing anything new. The closest thing to a new mechanism that this expansion introduced was there was a new ship called the Eye of Vect, which was... Uh, run by a Drukhari. And whenever you go on a mission for Traitor Command, you have to have that ship docked at Precipice. And it provides a benefit where you can create a blood debt with the ship. And in return, you can turn one of your activation dice to a six, which obviously enables you to pull off one of your special super powered moves. But when you return to Precipice, you have to pay the blood debt. And if you don't, you get injuries that you have to basically carry with you on your next mission. So a little nuance to the to the way the game plays but nothing serious nothing major no no big shake up to how things were happening the biggest disappointment is probably what was in the secret envelope which almost felt like an afterthought really you complete the mission you go back to the eye of vect and the drakari there uh, provides you with an implement of cruelty and I think there might have been different weapons you could get. I think this was a a random drop, but I got the Shemeshi Blade. Um, other people maybe in the comments would like to say if they got something different. I'm not entirely sure about that. But regardless, um, probably not even worth trying to hunt down all the different variants if they do exist. It's just another weapon. It's just another item that you can take. At this point, my recollection gets a little bit hazy in terms of the order that these expansions came out, but I'm pretty sure that next up were these two small card packs, Advanced Arsenal and Endless Peril. I could go back through all of my records and find out exactly, but it doesn't really matter. These kind of slot in pretty much anywhere in the time scale. It doesn't matter because this was just a small pack of additional items and this was a small pack of additional 
adventure cards, exploration cards. And they were nice to have, they add more variety, but I do feel that if you already have all of the other expansions, you already get access to quite a lot of new exploration cards and item cards. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have access to these, but at the time, particularly when they came out, it was nice to have access to a whole bunch of new weapons, some of which are stupidly overpowered, and also those new exploration cards. I particularly liked the new challenge cards in there. I was less interested in the combat cards because I really don't feel that they changed up the combats enough. They're just new layouts of the maps, but you're still using exactly the same map tiles. And I, I didn't feel that they were any more interesting or varied or different to what we got in the core game anyway. Next up, we had our first of two big box expansions. This was Escalation, one of the very best expansions because it gave you more of everything and it also introduced a new way of playing the game. You got a whole bunch of new enemies, you got cultists with a firebrand to lead them, you got new heroes, so you had four extra heroes to explore with. It introduced the retinue characters. There was one retinue character in the box that you could find during the story campaign. And then that retinue character would accompany you and help you. And then that is something that Games Workshop would run with in White Dwarf articles by adding extra retinue characters for you to have access to as you played. And it changed the way that you explored the fortress because in this particular storyline, you are going into a area of the fortress that is more structurally consistent it doesn't keep shifting and changing so you can actually map out your route and there's a really interesting new mapping mechanism where you can get lost but you can draw a map and eventually find your way through the catacombs which was really interesting really changed up how this particular mission played made it very different to all of the missions that had played up to this point but really this is just a great box of extra stuff Obviously having four new heroes also means you got new ships with new special abilities, you got new items that you could trade on those ships, whole new ways of combining your teams to create new combos. You then had the new enemies to deal with which you could use in this campaign particularly but then you could also feed them back into your other games as well. And it just really opened up the game and gave you a lot more of everything to do. Really good expansion. Furthermore, it continues the core game narrative. Obviously, at the end of the core game, you kill Obsidious Malux, but in Escalation, he comes back. He has been augmented by the Blackstone Fortress. He has been changed and altered. He is stronger, and he is trying to continue with his nefarious machinations, and you have to face him again. And you get this sense that as you are evolving and changing in the Blackstone Fortress, so is he. Really interesting. You start to see how you're going to keep butting heads with this character and how he's doing his own thing that you can't always see, but you see the effects of it. And this ties into the secret envelope that you get at the end of this mission, which is another one of these Augmetics. And this time I got the Augmetic of Brutality. These Augmetics attach to a particular character and they make that character immortal. And they also give them a permanent boost that lasts for the rest of your campaign. And you get this sense that you're picking up these Augmetics and becoming immortal and becoming stronger. Obsidious Malax is doing the same thing. I would say that if you can only get one expansion for the game, try and make it this one. This is the one that gives you so much more of everything to play with and will really extend the play life of your core game experience. And at the end of it, you defeat Obsidious Malax again and you can effectively consider that the end of the narrative. Obviously that narrative does continue into Ascension, but if you don't have Ascension or you don't want to get Ascension, you can just imagine that this is the end of the story and Obsidious Malax has been defeated. But overall, yeah, this is the one to get, I would say. This is the one to look out for. And by contrast, the next expansion we have is Abominable Intellect, which I would say is the expansion which is the worst and really not worth hunting down. If you don't have it, you really aren't missing anything. It was mainly intended to up the difficulty of the game, to address concerns that the game was too easy. And it does that by giving you a whole bunch of cards that you can replace... Um, your expansion and core set cards with and 
it increases the size of the spawns when you're playing. So rather than getting three or four of a particular enemy, you might get eight or nine. Of course, that means that you're going to run out of miniatures in the core box. So at the same time, they actually released miniatures packs so you could buy more miniatures. And this really felt lazy to me. I didn't like this at all. I don't think that just increasing the size of spawns is the way to go. I think it's a better idea to make enemies more challenging. Just constantly putting plastic out on the table, mowing it down, taking it back off, putting it back on. That's not fun to me. I would rather have one or two really cool elite enemies that are a challenge to take down and really make you think rather than just having a massive horde of things to plow through. So I don't think this addressed the problem uh, the way that it should have done and I did an extensive review on Abominable Intellect and I go into quite a lot of my thoughts on new problems that the cards actually create. I think the only good thing about these cards is that they all had like an additional environmental effect on them so you can use these cards to randomly add environmental effects to your battle. I believe they're called twists, I can never remember exactly what they're called, but um, they can be a lot of fun, they can change up your battles. So it's kind of worth it for those, but definitely not worth paying over the odds for on the secondary market. Definitely not worth hunting down and not worth losing any sleep over if you don't have it. Next up was the Blink and You Will Miss It No Respite. And this expansion causes a lot of consternation for a number of reasons. First of all, it was the first and in fact only Blackstone Fortress expansion that used miniatures that already existed. It repurposed miniatures and it was the easy build Plague Walkers and Plague Marines that were available in like the 40k starter sets and they were available in little easy build kits for next to nothing. And they were very readily available, very inexpensive, yet the cost of No Respite was the same as the cost of Dreaded Amble and Traitor Command, which had obviously included brand new original interesting miniatures so that was a bit of a shame uh, and I say it's a bit of a shame because No Respite is actually one of the best small box expansions it has a really interesting campaign where the Plague Marines have entered the Blackstone Fortress and they have started setting up a series of different diseases and you have to go on a series of quests to take on these diseases and each disease has its own stronghold at the end with its own little special way of defeating the disease and those strongholds are some of the most interesting and inventive so it's a shame that it was packaged up in such a way that made it seem less appealing. Furthermore, whilst some people were umming and ahhing over whether they really wanted to pay that much money, it vanished. It really was a blink and you will miss it expansion. I think it was on sale for maybe two months and then it was gone and it is now incredibly expensive on the secondary market. And again, that is a shame because it is an interesting expansion. It really does bring some new and interesting things to the table and it is a lot of fun. And of course, I am not at all biased by the fact that Manurgle boys are in there. Having said all that, I have seen this going for horrifically high prices on the secondary market and I would encourage people to think twice before paying those sums for it. I don't want anybody to get buyer's remorse and, and pick this up and then go, well, okay, it's not a very big campaign and the miniatures I already had or they're really easy to get cheaply. It's certainly a problem. It was expensive on retail release. Now on the secondary market, it's just obscene. But anyway, as I said, you have to defeat these various diseases and uh, send the Plague Marines packing. It doesn't continue the main narrative, but at the end of it, you do get another secret envelope. And the secret envelope for this expansion relates to another ship that gets added to Precipice. During this campaign, we learn more about Sawbone Station, which is where the Jacaro hang out and ply their trade. And when you're picking up diseases and things during the campaign, you can go to Sawbone Station to get healed up. Once you have completed this No Respite expansion, Sawbone Station becomes a permanent addition to Precipice, much like the Set 7 base for the Dreaded Amble expansion. And two things will happen. First of all, one of your characters will be granted total immunity by the Jacaro. This is a special card, which is a medical marvel, and this will apply for the rest of your campaign for that particular hero. Second of all, for future missions, you can access Sawbone Station, where you can actually pay for inspiration points. And this provides another way 
to build up those inspiration points for various uses. This is a really interesting addition to Precipice and another reason why No Respite was overall a good expansion despite the uh, repurposing of miniatures. Next came Deadly Alliance and besides Abominable Intellect, for me this was the worst expansion because the storyline is you are escorting this Zote into the Blackstone Fortress to find some Archaeotech. And yeah, it's an escort mission and anybody who plays video games will know that escort missions are rubbish and this one's not really much better. You have to constantly keep the Zote happy, you have to make sure that he doesn't get angry with you, you have to protect him. and. Yeah, he's strong, he's really powerful, but he's also very, very temperamental and he can get upset with you really quickly and then go off and do his own random things and ruin your plans. And I just didn't really enjoy the campaign itself, but it does have um, an interesting conclusion. The contents of the secret envelope are very good. And of course, you do get a cool Zote miniature. So as with the Dreaded Amble before, we are getting a classic character reintroduced to the Blackstone Fortress so that was really nice as well but yeah the secret envelope contains a couple of things first of all one of your characters will acquire the forerunner artifact which is a really interesting item because when you use it you get to choose one of three things that it does and it becomes a permanent emplacement on the battlefield until it is destroyed by the enemies and it can create barriers it can become a cannon it can become a regeneration point for improving your chances of recovering hit points it's a really interesting item and does very much reflect the strange alien nature of the technology that the zote was looking for but even better than that the archivist finally permanently loses his temper with you and decides that from now on he is going to roam around the blackstone fortress giving you a hard time so it actually introduces the archivist who until this point has been a retinue character as an enemy it's a new enemy character a big enemy that you can just add into your spawn cards and he will just turn up randomly and add an extra challenge to your battles and that is a really cool extra addition to the game and well worth it and then at last there was ascension i have done two videos on ascension going into some detail of the storyline of it so i'm not going to do that all again here but it is a really exciting conclusion to the whole narrative of the game. Precipice is being drawn into the Blackstone Fortress. You go on one desperate mission to try and save it. You effectively fail. Precipice gets absorbed into Blackstone Fortress and then you have to find a way to rescue everybody. And while that is happening, Obsidious Malax comes back again. And they set this up in, in a way that you get it in two sections. First of all, there's a very small mission that you can see when you open the box, you can see all the contents of it. And at the end of that, you get a secret envelope, which gives you yet another Augmetic. This time I got the Augmetic of Control, which means you've got three Augmetics at this point. But then once you complete that small mission, you open up a tray inside the box and there's a whole bunch of hidden stuff and a whole massive campaign, which is as big as the one from the core game. Obsidious Malax is back, there's now great big spindle drones, the Guardian drones, which are hunting you down. And there's a whole new tower defense mini game where enemies will come in and you get to purchase defense turrets, walls, barriers, cannons, things like that to help fend them off. Really exciting stuff. Precipice, of course, is gone, so you can't keep hopping back to Precipice. And they completely changed the way that exploring worked. Effectively, you lay out a map tile which has exit points on it. When you reach an exit point, you draw a card which will show you which map tile to place next. And then you work through the missions that way rather than drawing from the exploration cards. It's a complete change. It's a much more traditional approach to dungeon crawling, I would say. And it's really exciting. And as you're exploring, you can find little crashed remnants of precipice which will give you perks. Really exciting, really fun, really stacks the pressure on also introduces a concept which fleshes out the characters it creates these situations where you draw these cards if you don't want to take a grievous wound you can draw a card instead but the card you draw will apply some kind of 
psychological effect on your characters and you can gradually get situations where certain characters won't work together, they don't trust each other, certain characters become greedy or selfish and it really helps to flesh out these characters and engrosses you in this story and it is, it's just wonderful and it's such a shame that Games Workshop priced it so highly. I just think if people have been playing Blackstone Fortress they need to play this expansion. It's such a good expansion, but it is so much money. It's very difficult to recommend it to people at the price point. But for me, um, Blackstone Fortress, obviously one of my favorite games. I have a hobby budget and I just made sure I funneled all my hobby budget into getting this expansion. And I just denied myself a few other purchases afterwards and I was very happy with that decision. I would have been upset if I hadn't seen this final conclusion and I am very happy with how it concludes. And then, as a final bonus, the story does have a bit of a downer ending for the heroes, or at least some of the heroes. They do manage to remove precipice but they fire it off into space and who knows where it's going next and i did say in my other videos that it creates a sort of lost in space situation where precipice goes hurtling off into space and no one knows where it's going to go and it could well crash on another planet it could bump into a hive fleet it's a great opportunity for them to do a second warhammer quest game in the 40k universe with Precipice involved, so Precipice could land on a planet and then they have to find a new settlement and explore that planet. Plenty of opportunities to continue that narrative in that sense. However, the heroes who rescue Precipice, they get left behind on the Blackstone Fortress and those who have the Augmetics actually become part of the functionings of the Blackstone Fortress and then the Blackstone Fortress drifts off into the deepest, darkest depths of space with the heroes, immortal as they now are, constantly roaming the corridors. It's a bit dark, but it's just a great ending. It's a great, dramatic ending. And as a little cherry on the cake, in the final secret envelope, they give you an Obsidious Malix character card. So you can now use Obsidious Malix as a hero. And that's just wonderful, because who doesn't want to be a massive Chaos Lord with a hammer? We are almost there, we are almost through everything. We really just need to talk about White Dwarf. Throughout 2019, Games Workshop published quite a few articles in White Dwarf, which expanded Blackstone Fortress, new uh, retinue characters, new missions and the like. They combined all of those into an annual at the end of 2019. So this annual would have slotted in after Escalation, but before No Respite. and. It combines all of those White Dwarf articles and then also introduces a few new things, including one new mission, which also introduced a couple of new enemy characters. We have... On the back here... Our Master of Possession. And then... Our Greater Possessed. And yes, they didn't include actual physical cards. You have to photocopy them and make up your own cards, which is a bit of a shame. So this annual covered everything from 2019 and it had the narrative campaign that used the contents of the Dreaded Amble, which really does make it a good solid purchase. Moving into 2020, White Dwarf content for Blackstone Fortress was much, much thinner on the ground. The year started strong, the first few months of the year we got content, but then that drifted away and uh, overall there were just five issues in 2020 which had any new content and that is going to be, I think, another reason why it doesn't look like we're going to get a 2020 annual. So for completeness and to round off this video, I'm just going to very quickly show the five issues so that anybody who wants to pick up those last few bits of Blackstone Fortress content can do so. And I really am going to blitz through these very quickly because I have done videos on each of these magazines already, so you can find those in the Blackstone Fortress playlist. But issue 450 was the first of the year to have any new content. It was a daring rescue, another one of these narrative missions that links together a series of challenges and combat encounters to create a mini story. In this case, one of the heroes has been kidnapped. You have to rescue him. And 
I always thought this was a good one that if you played with an adversary player, if you had an evil player in control of the Blackstone Fortress, this is one that they could throw at you if one of your heroes got taken out of combat. If you got knocked out, you could say, haha, right, we're going to kidnap this character. You now have to play the daring rescue scenario. In issue 451, they introduced a new character. It was the Eversaw Assassin. And they create these super-powered characters to be army of one characters where you're not intended to send them out with a party of heroes. You're supposed to go on the missions on your own, just for solo play. So these particular characters are very, very strong. They've done a few of these. They're okay. I think they're fine for like maybe one play, maybe two. But... You're not going to want to use them all the time. They are super powerful. You can't really use them in your campaigns because they're so strong. So they're fun little diversions, but yeah, nice to have, but not something I would I would go out of my way to, to chase down. Issue 452 had a new retinue character. It was a Jokero. The best thing for me when they introduce a new retinue character is you also get a little one-off mission to play in order to unlock that character. And in this case, the Jokero is tinkering with a little Archaeotech device and you have to protect him from an onslaught of enemies while he finishes his work. Issue 453 had another one of these Army of One characters. This time it is a Death Watch Watchmaster. And again, it's kind of fun for a one-time playthrough. Um, I've actually not even used this particular character. But because they don't really have a use in a campaign game with team play, I can take it or leave it with these really. And then finally, we have issue 457. And I say finally because I really do think this is going to be probably the last Blackstone Fortress content we see in White Dwarf. It's another one of these narrative missions which combine the challenges and combats to create a little mini story. And in this case, it's a little story for just two characters. You are 025 and Daedalosus go into the Blackstone Fortress to try and learn more about the Spindle Drones. It came out after the final expansion, Ascension, so it does use Guardian drones. And as with everything else released since Escalation, it also requires the contents of Escalation to play. But that is it. That is everything from the Blackstone Fortress core game through to the final White Dwarf content in issue 457. What a journey. Wow. It's a lot of content, it's a lot to play through, and it's a lot of fun. If you want to hunt down this stuff, do remember, almost all of it is sold out and is already very expensive on the secondary market. Furthermore, always check what content you need in order to use new expansions. Any expansions that came out after Escalation will require Escalation to play. But I think, I have talked, as always, for long enough about Blackstone Fortress. I really have, I feel, exhausted everything I have to say. If I think of anything I should have mentioned, I will put it in the video description. But I have tried to be as comprehensive as I can, but there is so much to think about, so much to go through. I'm sure there's going to be something I've overlooked mentioning. Regardless, hopefully this has been helpful, interesting, I don't know. But this is Blackstone Fortress. The beginning, the middle, and almost certainly the end. Thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.